When you stop chasing the wrong things, you give the right things a chance to catch you. Lolly Dashkel. My friends, the right things are what you learn from being in the market every day. 10 to 15 minutes, that is all we ask. What do we see going on today? We see everything down except gold. Gold is the only little bright spot, that bright, shiny gold metal <clears throat> is the only bright spot in an otherwise turbulent and down market. Let's look at the S&P 500 first, down 1%. We have a red spinning top. That crossover that we saw that looked almost definite on Monday. Look at how it has whittled down. What do we see going on right now? Well, if we look over on the left-hand side of the screen, we see it's laminated right over the top of the price percent oscillator laminated right over the top of the exponential moving average line. That is our signal line. Another down day on Thursday and Friday, and heck, we might have a bounce off and literally a weekly vertical crossover going down or a bounce off is what we call that. Who knows? I don't know. No trade yet. We'll keep our eye on things and see how it continues to develop. Derivative oscillator is positive. We have a red spinning hammer, upside down hammer. We look at the two day. What do we see there? Price percent oscillator is less than flat, still positive. Derivative oscillator positive, losing momentum. Big red down candle is forming on Wednesday, first day of the latest two day candle. We look at the half day. What do we see there? Of course, we see where things started moving down in the afternoon on Tuesday, then plumbing down on Wednesday morning and a little further down in the afternoon. Price percent oscillator negative, derivative oscillator heading down. So we'll keep an eye on things and see which way they are a-going. Well, we'll just continue to watch, wait and see. Let the charts lead us. Now let's go to... The NASDAQ 100, it was down over twice what the S&P was, 2.17%. Again, another inverted red spinning hammer. Open box red candle means a slowdown in the down movement. And again, trying to cross over, but uh, we'll see how it ends up at the end of the week on that price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator, green and growing. We see on the first day of the latest two-day candle. After a red spinning top and a doji, we now have a strong red down candle ha hammering down. Derivative oscillator positive, losing momentum. Price percent oscillator less than positive. Um, as far as its movement goes, it is, it is in the green. We look at the half-day chart. What do we see there? Down in the morning, a little further down in the afternoon. Again, over twice as much down as the S&P. Derivative oscillator heading down, price percent oscillator heading down. And when I say in the green, I mean that it is positive on that two-day chart for the price percent oscillator. So weakness in stocks. We'll see what happens if that weekly vertical crossover becomes a thing of the past. We'll let these charts lead us. What do we see on bonds? Bonds down for the day, 0.81%. And again, bonds had been sliding, you know, moving down strong and then sliding sideways last week, slowing down in that down movement. But it is resuming to a lower low price percent oscillator kinking over, going down, derivative oscillator negative, losing some downward momentum. We look at the two day and of course we had things bounce off there, price percent oscillator really putting in a strong down candle for the day. First day of the latest two-day candle, derivative oscillator that had just about disappeared, going negative. Bonds continuing to move down. And of course, we look at this half day, we can see where things were started going really strongly down on Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, slacked off a little bit Wednesday afternoon, but that price percent oscillator still rocketing down along with the derivative oscillator. So we'll keep our eye on things as again, bonds have heated up with more down movement. Of course, we had that weekly vertical crossover in bonds all the way back on Friday the 7th of January. 
down for two weeks sideways for a week, down for three weeks sideways, and up a little bit over the course of two weeks, down for three weeks sideways last week, and the resumption starts again. That is where we are on bonds. What about gold? Gold up a little bit, 0.23%. Price percent oscillator, though, is still positive, but heading down. Derivative oscillator positive, losing momentum. What do we have there? A solid green spinning top, almost a doji, not a lot of movement. We had about the same kind of thing except longer wicks back on the week ending the 25th of March. We'll see how things continue to move. A red spinning top, solid red so far as far as the latest two-day candle first day. Price percent oscillator heading down, derivative oscillator negative, losing some downward momentum. Just sideways sliding in gold, tending down on that two-day. What do we see on the half day? Some upward movement maybe uh, in the morning and then peeling a good bit of that off in the afternoon again to finish the day up 0.23%. So what are we waiting for in gold? Well, if we want to trade it, we want that two-day to cross back over going up before Gold crosses over going down on the weekly. Is that going to happen? Don't know. What about Bitcoin? Well, we look at Bitcoin and we can see great scale Bitcoin down for the day, almost 6%. We look at our Bitcoin futures, BITO down 5.2%, BTF down 5.04%, uh, and XBTF down 5.17%. We look at where Bitcoin is after that weekly vertical crossover, shaving off a lot of that going from a green candle to a red open box. It's not a solid red yet, but it has slowed down in that down movement. Derivative oscillator still gaining some momentum. Price percent oscillator still heading up. Check out the two-day. You can see where things peaked on the Tuesday, Wednesday, the 29th and 30th of last week and then started slowing down toward the end of the week, beginning of this week, first day of this latest two-day candle, a moving down quite strong. No crossover going down yet, but the positive price percent oscillator, still in the green there, nonetheless is heading down, and of course the derivative oscillator losing upward momentum, still green. We look at the half day, and of course, let's check that out on something like XBTF, a little more accurate intraday. Well, looks very similar uh, down in the morning, a little further down in the afternoon, price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator heading down. So we'll keep our eye on things and see if Bitcoin's going to straighten its act out anytime soon. Uh, what we've seen in the past is, yes, it does when we have these weekly vertical crossovers. They don't typically pop over and then roll back. But we'll see how long it takes Bitcoin to get some of its juice. That's where we are, folks. We so appreciate you being with us. Do make sure to take our training on the average true range and how to use that to set your profit and loss parameters along with the always winning strategy. If you don't take those soon, well, they're going down pretty soon. So please make sure to take them. I'm going to put them again at the end of today's training. I think it's the best trainings I've ever done. They're free. There's nothing being sold to you there. The only thing we're doing is sharing with you invaluable knowledge. Where do you get that? And do you appreciate it? If you do, of course, we do appreciate you supporting us as a Patreon supporter. But my friends, not required. God bless all the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.